Many of the people watching this have been a customer of Spirit Airlines. I'm able to say that with confidence because they are among the 10 biggest in the United States. Their 173 planes fly tens of millions of passengers between 85 airports throughout the US, Latin America, and the Caribbean. They are a sizable business that generates billions of dollars in sales each year, though despite growing to that size and becoming arguably successful, they have developed a nasty reputation. They are like the airline that people try to avoid Avoid. Just hearing me say that name, Spirit Airlines, might make you think of an upsetting experience you've had with them. In fact, I would go so far as to say that they're among the most hated companies out there, which is why I believe they qualify for my series that features generally dislike companies. Now, to be clear, this video is meant to be as objective as possible. I'm not trying to pick at every little negative thing about Spirit based on a personal experience or anything like that. I have simply seen a lot of hatred toward them and want to explore where it all comes from. But before I get to that, let me try to prove to you just how much people dislike them. I have seen it firsthand through the comments on this channel, people making jokes about them, complaining about them, sharing personal experiences, and requesting that I make this very video. Trust me, it wasn't hard to search through the channel to find some negative comments about Spirit Airlines. Speaking of jokes about them, Spirit has been the punchline of numerous late night jokes, especially on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Spirit Airlines. <laughs> If you wanted to eat clean peanuts, you should have flown Delta. <laughs> And speaking of complaints about them, from 2009 to 2013, the Department of Transportation received three times more complaints per passenger from Spirit over any other airline, giving them the technical title of most complained about airline. The following year, Spirit themselves conducted what they called their State of Hate Survey, offering 8,000 air miles to people who filled it out. It was more about what people disliked about flying in general, but the results still showed that roughly 40% of the 28,000 people that took took the survey hated Spirit above all others. Which isn't surprising because even as of 2022, they have still been receiving low customer satisfaction scores. Based on surveys, the American Customer Satisfaction Index consistently ranks Spirit as the lowest among all major airlines. In 2022, they received a score of 63 compared to an industry benchmark of 75. And let's be honest here, the airline industry isn't the most well-liked in general, so being the lowest among that group might really be saying something. And finally, in 2018, Spirit Airlines was ranked number 9 on USA Today's list of America's top 20 most hated companies. Even if you're not familiar with Spirit and their signature yellow planes, I would hope that all of this is enough to convince you that people just don't like them very much. So now, let's talk about the airline itself. The company has roots going back to the 1960s, where they started out in Michigan as a trucking company. In the 1970s, they started specializing in the delivery of automotive parts. In the 1980s, 80s, they morphed into a tour operator to entertainment destinations, essentially meaning they offered chartered planes that would fly to places like Las Vegas or Atlantic City so people could fly there and gamble. Then, in the early 1990s, the airline industry was struggling, partially due to a slow economy and the Persian Gulf War. It caused some of the bigger companies to collapse, and they took advantage of the situation by buying some planes at a discount, hiring some newly available employees, and changing their name to Spirit Airlines, effectively transforming into a small traditional airline that transported about 150,000 passengers in its first year. By the end of the decade, when they moved their headquarters from Michigan down to Florida, they had steadily scaled their operations to well over a million passengers a year. In 2003, they offered their first international flights to Cancun, Mexico, soon followed by flights available throughout Latin America and the Caribbean that quickly grew to be a quarter of their business and still remains a major part of it. Now, up until that point, to my knowledge anyway, people weren't saying anything anything negative about Spirit. In fact, most people didn't even know about them at all. They were still relatively small because it's a competitive industry and they weren't doing anything special to separate themselves from the others. In 2004, controlling stake of the company was sold to a venture capital firm called Oak Tree Capital Management, and two years later, they sold Spirit to another venture capital firm called Indigo Partners, and that is where everything changed. So now, my first reason behind the hatred of Spirit Airlines is the fee. 
fees, everybody hates extra fees, right? And I realize that this might sound like a lame reason at first because we see extra fees all over the place, especially in the airline industry. But I'm going to show you how Spirit takes things to a whole new level. That year, along with the new owners, Spirit got a new CEO, Ben Baldanza, that implemented a new strategy. In his words, in 2006, we decided we were going to run Spirit as an airline that competes on the basis of price and price alone. They became what's known as an ultra low cost carrier. And let me break down exactly what that means. Their new pricing strategy was to unbundle everything. The ticket that they sold for the flight admittedly became pretty cheap, but it no longer included many of the things that you would typically expect it to include. It's like if I sold you a hamburger for a really low price, but then made you pay extra if you wanted lettuce or tomatoes or mustard or anything else on it. In 2007, they became the first US airline to charge a fee for checking a bag. A few years later, they started charging a fee for carry-on bags that had to go in that overhead compartment. I mean, if you're buying tickets for a Spirit flight, you can expect to pay extra fees for just about everything. Seriously, selecting your seat ahead of time, priority boarding, changing or canceling a flight, any kind of food or beverage on the flight, you even have to pay to print your boarding pass at the airport. So, starting in 2007, their revenue per passenger from the tickets started decreasing because they lowered the price of those tickets, and their non-ticket revenue from all the other stuff started increasing, eventually meeting in the middle and crossing each other on that graph. You might take notice that the total revenue per passenger hasn't changed dramatically. The reason they've been so successful with this model is due to the number of passengers. Whether it be people lured in by that deceptively cheap-looking ticket price, or people who really are looking for the cheapest flight possible, Spirit has attracted a lot of business this way. Oddly enough, the very thing that people dislike most about Spirit is the same thing that has made them so successful. Whether or not this seems to be good or bad for the customer really depends on how you frame it. They like to say that they give customers the power to save money by paying only for the options they choose, which is fair enough. If you only want a basic hamburger with maybe one or two extra ingredients, you would likely save money, but if you want anything close to a typical hamburger with all the usual stuff on it, you have to be careful because you can easily end up paying more for it this way. Spirit is able to offer outrageously low ticket prices, partially because of the extra revenue generated from all those fees, and partially due to my next reason on the list, cost cutting. Right when they started their new strategy, they started turning a profit. In 2011, when they became a public company, they chose for their symbol on the stock market to be SAVE. As an ultra low cost carrier, they try to save money any possible way they can, and ideally pass the savings on to the customer, but some of the ways they've done it have been upsetting to people. A lack of legroom is a big one. All of their aircraft are from the Airbus A320 family and are loaded with practically as many seats as they can get away with. As their former CEO Ben Baldanza said, you start asking yourself, why would I put fewer seats on the airplane than the airplane can hold? A high density seating configuration combined with a high load factor means those spirit planes tend to be cramped and filled. Also along the lines of cost cutting, in 2010, their 440 pilots went on strike because they felt they were getting paid significantly less than over at similar competitors. It was resolved within a few days with Spirit agreeing to the concessions, but during that time, a bunch of flights were canceled, leaving their customers stranded or inconvenienced. For more, I guess, extreme cost cutting, in 2013, they got rid of their toll-free number, meaning that anyone who called their customer service from a landline would have to pay for that call. Sort of along the same lines would be some negative publicity they received in 2012. It was when a 76-year-old Vietnam veteran with terminal cancer named Jerry Meekins tried to get a $197 refund for his unused tickets and was denied because he didn't purchase the $14 insurance. The CEO held firmly with the decision initially, but eventually apologized and gave him the refund after massive public backlash. I don't know, you might have different stances on some of these issues, but I think we can see how all of these cost-cutting techniques have at times been a bit excessive and upsetting to members of the public. My final reason behind the hatred would be their advertising, which in a way is related to their cost cutting because they've maintained such a small advertising budget that they've often relied on shocking, edgy, or topical marketing that almost seems to be intentionally creating controversy and media attention. And you won't be surprised to hear that much like everything else, this strategy started shortly after Ben Baldanza took control of things. I imagine many of the viewers would find some of these to be in poor taste, but I feel I should at least briefly go through some of the bigger ones that stand out to show you what they've been doing, so keep all that in mind. In 2007, they ran their Many Islands Low Fares promotion. You could probably see what's 
going on there. In 2010, they ran these ads that said, check out the oil on our beaches, which may not seem offensive, but it was during the disastrous BP oil spill and heavily believed to be making light of that situation. In 2011, there was this edgy ad that seemed to be making fun of a big scandal in the news involving Congressman Anthony Weiner. That same year, they had a stripper mobile that was used to promote flights to Las Vegas. In 2015, they celebrated the addition of their 69th aircraft with $69 flight tickets. Do you get the idea here? They're all very cheap, yet controversial ads that news outlets tend to report on, and that gives them more attention to the brand, oftentimes negative attention, but I think we've established that Spirit hasn't been all that concerned with building a positive reputation. To finish things up, in early 2022, it was looking like Spirit was going to merge with another ultra-low-cost carrier called Frontier, which really seemed to make sense in a lot of ways. Frontier is from Denver, operating mostly in the West, whereas Spirit is from Florida, operating mostly in the East. But Spirit shareholders voted against it because JetBlue Airways came in with a much higher $3.6 billion offer to acquire them. Now, JetBlue is a low-cost airline, but they don't take things nearly as far as we've been talking about. And if you remember from earlier, actually rank the highest in customer satisfaction. So this right here would almost definitely cause some major changes over at Spirit. They say they plan to close the transaction in 2024 and begin operating as a single carrier in 2025. But I do want to point out that as of the making of this video, the deal is yet to be approved by the government, so it's unclear if any of this will actually happen. Let me know in the comments. This might be a dangerous question, but what do you think of Spirit Airlines? Does it bring up bad memories even hearing that name, or do you think they are a decent enough option for anyone looking to save money on a flight? And if you are one of the many people that has some hatred toward them, where does it come from? Is it something I talked about on my list, or is it something entirely different? I want to hear about your experience. I do want to make sure that the conversations don't get too out of hand, just keep it cool, and any other thoughts you have about Spirit Airlines, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.